All right, welcome everybody. Um, Wayne talked about Allure in the previous session, um, so I'm not going to explain too much of the background of Allura, but jump pretty quickly into the details. Um, but first of all, uh, we'll set the stage a little bit. Um, I am an Allura developer. I'm on the Allura PMC, and I'm the vice president of the Apache Allura project. Um, and I work for SourceForge, where Allura is used quite heavily. And what is Allura? Um, it is a software development site. It provides Git and Subversion, a wiki, ticket tracker, forums, lots of different tools for uh, hosting and running your project. Um, it's written in Python, and it is uh, more than just a hodgepodge of tools, but it really is a whole platform um, so that you can extend it and add more tools to it. Uh, it was started at SourceForge a number of years ago, um, but as of a couple of weeks ago, it's now a top-level project at Apache. So in this talk, I'm going to cover three main areas, um, using and customizing Allura. So I'm going to go through um, some of the main concepts of what you can do with a project, um, what all the different tools are, and how you can customize those and uh, take advantage of them for your project and uh, talk a little bit about neighborhoods as well. And then the um, second portion, I'm going to talk about running your own instance of Allura and what it would take to, to do that, get that up and running. Uh, and then talk a bit about Allura for Apache projects and um, some ideas and visions for what Allura can do for projects at Apache. So uh, start here. I've got lots of screenshots. Most of this is screenshots. Um, when you get a project uh, registered on Allura, um, it comes with a number of different tools that you can choose from. And right now we are here uh, in the admin section of the project. You can see there's a number of other tools available uh, that the project already has an activity, wiki, tickets, discussion, and blog tools. Um, but this page we're on right now is in the admin area and specifically looking at the tools section of that. So this sort of illustrates all the different tools that are available. Uh, you can just click on any of the tools to install uh, another tool into your project at any time. Uh, and you can see down the, the lower half some of the existing tools, and there's various options to uh, control those. One of the nice things about projects in the Allure system is that they're very flexible. So even though you know, there's a blog tool already here, you can click to install the blog tool again. And so that. Uh, lets you have multiple blogs uh, on a single project. You could have 15 Git repositories. You could have a subversion repository that's named legacy, whatever you want. So whenever you install a tool, you get to set the name and the uh, URL path for it. Uh, you can also have sub-projects within a project. Um, so that really is just a, a whole other project nested within the project, um, and you can use that to organize sub-projects if a, if a project has that. So now I'm just going to step through a number of the different tools in more detail. Uh, look at the wiki first here. Um, so this is a screenshot of uh, one of my test projects um, on the Allura instance itself. Um, and so everything in Allura is marked down, and a wiki is a good example of that. Um, you know, the whole page you can format with all the standard markdown formatting, you know, links and bullet lists, tables, headers. Um, but this really illustrates a number of other uh, things that you can do with markdown where we've extended it uh, for Allure. I'm not sure if you can read all this, but uh, you can link to another page just by putting it in brackets. Um, and that will just be a regular wiki link. But it's not just a wiki link. Um, that's an artifact reference. So a wiki is an artifact, and every item in Allura is what we call an artifact. And so you can link to any artifact. And uh, further along in the, the line here, uh, you can see ticket number 123. And pound 123 is how you reference a ticket number. So in a wiki page, you can link to a ticket, just like that. And as Wayne had, uh, had mentioned uh, in the, the talk before, you can also reference between 
um, different tools and projects. So the last example there, if you do it in brackets, some other project, colon, the tool name, colon, the artifact name, like a wiki page or a revision number, you can link between projects um, to reference a, a forum post or a ticket or a revision number in any project. Um, so that's a really powerful thing, and uh, it's not just in wiki pages. You can do this in a commit message. You can do this in a forum post, in a comment on a blog post, wherever you want. Uh, and then we've got some more examples down here of macros that the wiki and markdown support across Allura uses. Um, so, for example, you can include another page, and that'll just include it right there within your current page. Um, you can list pr project admins. If you want to have your home wiki page, list what project admins are for that project. Uh, you can list screenshots. You can embed a YouTube video. There's a, a lot of different options um, that come bundled with the wiki, uh, and with, with Allura for, for any markdown page. Then there's also a few other standard items that I'll mention here, um, not only for wiki, but like I said, for any tool. There's a search box in the upper left. Everything in Allura gets indexed into Solar, so it's searchable. Um, and so you can search within this current tool, or um, you can click through after doing a search and expand your search across the whole project and match wiki pages, tickets, forum posts, et cetera. Um, there's also some admin options. We can look a little bit at, at those later, but you've got a number of options to control how this looks. You can turn off that sidebar on the left if you want to take up the full width. Um, wiki pages also come with commenting enabled. Um, and again, this applies to every tool. Um, everything can have threaded comments that go with them. And there's an option for wikis to turn that off if you don't want people to be able to comment on your pages and you really just want it to to be you know, more documentation with no commentary, things like that. So next, let's look at the, uh, the blog tool. Um, the blog tool can be used for a number of different things, not just blogging. Um, a lot of projects uh, can use the blog tool for project news, uh, for example, so it's more of a news tool than a blog tool. And again, like I mentioned, you can name this tool whatever you want, so it's the blog tool, but you can call it news, you know, project news or um, announcements or whatever your project feels like is a, uh, a good name for it. Um, one example um, of an interesting use case for the blog tool um, is this is a little tutorial series about how to develop new plugins for Allura. Um, so this is uh, actually, you can see at the top it says Tim Van Steenberg, so this is actually the blog tool um, as part of a user's own profile within Allura. Uh, he installed the blog tool on his profile page and has been doing blog posts there. And again, just like the wiki, um, it uses Markdown. Um, you can have threaded comments on the blog tools. You can search. Um, everything in Allura runs through this common platform, so those sorts of features are available everywhere. Um, there's an RSS feed for this as well, obviously for blogs and news. That makes a lot of sense. And like everything else, it's a core feature, so you'll see RSS feeds throughout all the different tools in Allura. There's not a lot you can uh, configure with a blog tool as far as customizing it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the one thing that you can do is set it uh, to pull in external RSS feeds. So if you've got, um, say, you've got some news from some other site and you want to um, redistribute that, republish it within Allura. You can add uh, multiple blog feed URLs and it'll pull those in and convert them into blog items within Allura. Um, and you can see in this screenshot here um, below the dialog, you can see um, this admin page again. And I'm not gonna go through every single item here, but all the different tools have a number of different options. So the blog here has one link for external feeds, but also permissions, some more options, labeling. Um, and all the different tools have a variety of configuration options available to them. So let's look at the uh, permission settings. Um, this is for the blog tool, but um, this applies the same to, to every tool. Um, within the tool, there's a number of different permissions. Um, 
it's fairly uh, low level granularity so you can control uh, what permissions are available for different functions uh, and actions within the blog tool. So you can see here uh, the first one, couple are for uh, administrating and configuring the tool, um, but then there's moderating um, for um, moderating posts that come through. There's a uh, permission setting for posting new comments, uh, permission setting for reading, so you, could, you can change the permissions so that it was a, a, a private blog, for example, and only project members could, could read it, perhaps, or only yourself if you don't want anyone to read your private journal. You could, you could have a private journal on Allura. <laughs> um, and then unmoderated post. Um, there's a difference between posting and unmoderated posts. Um, so that the moderation system in Allura um, kicks in and um, you can have anonymous posts be moderated, so they have to be approved first, for example, and then you can have unmoderated posts um, be a permission that anyone with a logged in account can uh, post or perhaps any admin on the project can post without going through the moderation. Uh, and then last, of course, the, the write permission, and that's one for writing new blog post entries. And so for each of these permissions, and they'll vary a little bit um, between tools, different tools will have most of these, but some different ones that are specific to the different tools. And for each of these, you can see, um, there's, right now there's just one um, permission granted, so like the admin group, or over on the far right, you can see authenticated. That means anyone that's authenticated and logged in has that permission. Um, and so you can just add multiple groups um, or um, a single group, and you can define custom groups as well, and we'll look at that a bit later. So, again, this is for, for any tool. The permission system is fairly granular and lets you control exactly um, what can be done in each tool um, and lets you control who, who can do that. Let's look at uh, the discussion forum next. Um, this one doesn't have many um, settings in terms of configuring or customizing it, but it's just generally quite flexible um, because you can, not only can you make multiple uh, discussion tools like, like you can for any tool, but within the discussion tool, you can create multiple forums. So here there's one for open discussion and there's one for help. Uh, and you can click through and there's all the threads within that. So you can make as many different um, forum sections within the discussion tool. Um, and then you can set permissions differently between those different forums. Um, if you want to have a private forum or something uh, a little bit different than the rest of them. Uh, and then as far as what you can actually do in the forums, um, it's a pretty standard forum. You know, you can post new threads and reply to them. Um, one of the nice things is that you can subscribe to them by RSS or by email to get new updates and you can reply to those emails when they come through. And that reply will get sent back up to the forum tool and be posted as a new comment right there in the thread. So email integration both ways uh, in, in receiving emails and sending them back. Um, and the forum tool does this best, but other tools like um, uh, tickets or wikis, if there's comments on that type of artifact, those can also be sent out by email and you can reply and those replies will be added as comments back onto the ticket or wiki page. Let's talk about the code repositories that Allura offers. It comes bundled with Git and Subversion support, uh, and then I say plus Mercurial. Uh, Mercurial is packaged separately because it's GPL licensed. But one of the nice things about Allura is that it's this platform with pluggable tools. So really, it, it was a, a trivial um, task, really, when we um, pulled the Mercurial tool out and packaged it separately. And it's quite easy to just install that package and activate it if you want to have Mercurial support. Um, Git, Subversion, and Mercurial all build onto core functionality within Allura. They extend some of the, the base templates and base functionality. Um, so code browsing looks the same between all of them, very similar. Um, forking and merging is available for Git and also for Mercurial, and they work exactly the same. Yeah, question. So you pulled out the Mercurial tool without the license. Right. Where is that tool supposed to 
Yeah, so the Mercurial tool is not hosted with Apache because uh, by extension it's GPL licensed. It's hosted at SourceForge. Uh, it's published into the, the standard um, Python package index. So if you're familiar with Python, you can just pip install forge hg and you're all set. So just to g give a little quick example of what it, what it looks like, it's pretty much what you would expect when you're browsing code. Um, you can see all the files and folders there. You can see the most recent um, commits um, and, and timestamps for all of those. Um, you can see a checkout URL at the top. On the left side here, down starting from the bottom, we've got the various tags and branches that are available. Um, and then up at the top, there's a commit browser, which gives you a different view. Um, you can fork it directly from here. You can see what merge requests are outstanding. You can see what other forks are out there. Um, and there's a number of other pages. I'm not gonna show all of them, but obviously you can click on individual commit and you can see the diff there. Uh, you can get a history view and see the history of the whole repository, all, every commit um, and all the tags along the way, or you could look at the history of individual files and folders, et cetera. So um, again, with this, not much to configure or customize uh, in the tool itself. This is really just gonna reflect how you use your repository. Another question, yeah? It currently, uh, the question was whether you could do a merge request from a branch within uh, a single repository or if you have to do a merge request from a, a, a forked repository. Um, it currently uh, is set up that you would have to fork their repository, um, but that's something I've thought about as well, so I, I may, I've made an open ticket for it. Um, the current Allura development workflow um, for, for folks that, that work on Allura itself, we often just make a branch in the Allura repository itself since we have commit access to that. And so we aren't exercising that merge request, but if we, once we set up something like that, then we can use the merge request workflow for those local branches. And I think that'll be a nice enhancement. External links are a tool, I put that in quotes because it doesn't really do anything, uh, but it is a tool that you can add to your uh, project. And, it's a very useful option, especially if you, you know, it, it almost seems too obvious to me when you look at, at other um, project hosting sites like, like GitHub or uh, Bitbucket. Um, you can't really just add some link into the main menu for your project there, um, but Allura supports that. And so you can just configure any external links. If you've got, you know, documentation off on some certain site, you can make a link, call it documentation or docs or help or whatever you want and have that go off to uh, whatever suits your project's needs. And they'll show up in the main menu um, so it's accessible from any page. The ticket tracker is probably the most robust and feature-filled uh, tool within Allura. Uh, we've been using Allura's own ticket tracker for Allura for quite a while, so that's helped with that. And this screenshot is from Allura itself. Um, so there's quite a lot going on here. Um, and I'll talk through some of the, the different options that you have. Um, there's pr primarily two different views. Uh, this is a search result um, for a current milestone. Um, you can see on the side here, we've got some other milestones listed and some searches here. Um, you can do uh, full solar searches for tickets. Um, Everything's indexed into solar and all the fields, as well as custom fields, which I'll get into in just a moment, are indexed into solar. So you can um, use the search box in the upper left to search for just a generic keyword, or you can search for status equals, you know, open and, you know, the owner is somebody and the date was before some date. You can do whatever searches you want. And um, tool admins can, can save searches as well um, if you have a, like in this example, bite size searches. That's just a save search for the label bite size, which is what we use uh, for some of our easy tickets to get started. And then of course you can just click through to any ticket and view the detailed view of a ticket. Uh, let me go back and make sure I covered everything on this previous slide. Um, so in this list view, um, 
There are some custom fields here. There's some standard ones, obviously, for a ticket number, the summary, you know, what milestone it's in, and the status and the owner. Uh, but then there's labels. Uh, and then for us on Allura, we have a, a couple of custom fields for QA. We use that to track who's reviewed a ticket. And then size, which is something that uh, some of the full-time people who work on Allura have used to, to um, track some of their own time. Um, so when you make custom fields, they'll not only show up on uh, this list view, but then they'll also show up on the uh, detail view. So let's take a look at this detailed view and, and uh, see what the different options are for custom fields. This top section has the uh, ticket title and some of the metadata at the top, so those are the custom fields. Um, the status field is a standard field, but you can customize what statuses you want to use. And you can also um, list off which of those statuses represent an open state and which represent a, a closed ticket. So you can use whatever statuses make sense for your project and change those at any time. Um, and then you can add any number of new custom fields for whatever your project wants to track. And a custom field can just be plain text. It can be a, a Boolean choice, so like there's a component um, thing here, and so that's a drop-down choice. It can be a Boolean checkbox. It can be a numeric value. And then we've got a couple of custom fields which are special. Um, one is a user select, so you can select any number of users. So we use that for our QA or a review field. Um, you select a user. Um, milestones, you, there's a standard default milestone, but you can add additional milestones if you want to track some other versioning on every ticket. And then labels are um, a standard field, but you can just add new labels at any time. And uh, as you can see here, this is a, a label up there with 331 other uh, tickets with that label. You can just click on that to view all of them. Right below the, that top metadata, you can see there's a plus and a minus sign. That's for voting. You can vote on tickets. Um, that's an option that you can enable or disable um, for any ticket tracker, depending, again, if the project is interested in having voting or not. And then when voting's on, so this is a simple plus or minus that, that any user can click on. And then you can see that on the individual view, and it also goes into uh, solar. So you can sort tickets by number of votes or do a search for all the tickets that have you know, more than 10 votes or something like that. Um, again, here, there's a threaded discussion down below. Um, and the threaded discussions include these artifact references. So here's a comment that references another ticket number, and it's a link. Um, and up here um, are some other links. These include back references as well. So if you've got a ticket somewhere else that referenced this ticket, when you're looking at this ticket, you can see those, and you can click over to them if you want to um, see what's going on with that other ticket or you know, even a wiki page or forum thread or something like that. One other thing you can customize for tickets is um, you can add some custom text on the page that um, you first get to when you look at the ticket. So you can add some help text saying, you know, welcome to our ticket tracker. Please use this for certain types of bugs or go see the mailing list or forums if you want to give any special instructions to users. And you can also do that on the new ticket creation page. So you can give some guidance about what fields are used for um, or anything like that. And again, that's something you can customize for every, every ticket tracker separately. For project neighborhoods, uh, moving out of the, the, the scope of tools now, let's look at um, the, the bigger hierarchy of how things work within Allura. A project neighborhood is kind of like a container or a namespace for projects. So let's say you have a project called Hello World. Um, it would live at slash p slash hello world. p is the default neighborhood for all projects. But then you can have any number of other neighborhoods. So you could have a hello world project. Say there's a math department in your organization, and they have their own neighborhood. They could have a hello world project as well. So you can set up any number of neighborhoods that you want. And it's really just a, a container or a grouping mechanism for all the projects. There's also a special neighborhood for users. Every user automatically gets a project that goes with their username. And so um, not only can you see their profile information, but if I wanted to fork a project, I could fork it into my personal area 
or I could make a blog tool um, and put that on my personal um, user project. Uh, within a neighborhood, it's um, in addition to just containing projects, there's a lot of customization you can do for a neighborhood to really give a neighborhood its own feel. Um, so this is one neighborhood on, on SourceForge. Um, it's uh, Eris, which is part of Motorola. Um, so you can see up here, you can, you can name the neighborhood, you can have a custom icon. Um, neighborhoods themselves are actually a project. So at the neighborhood level, um, this neighborhood has a wiki and an OSS feedback forum. So you can install any tool at the neighborhood level and have you know, sort of top level um, tools. If you want to have news about your whole department or organization, you can install those at the neighborhood level or, you know, Again, like this project uh, has a wiki. And what we're looking at here is actually a wiki page called Projects. Uh, it uses a macro to list out all the projects. Question? So I, I know I've asked this question before, but it was over a year ago. Um, okay. Yeah, the question is if you can have a project in multiple neighborhoods, thinking about Apache, you could have a big data neighborhood um, in addition to the, the main neighborhood for all top level projects. Um, unfortunately, you can't. Neighborhoods more, are more of a name spacing or, or hierarchy. Um, there are um, some other ways you could go about that that perhaps aren't as developed or as feature rich as, as neighborhoods. Um, but you can categorize projects and add labels to projects. Um, and then you could have pages like this that list out all the projects with a certain label or something like that. Um, for, for a neighborhood, you, there's also additional customization that you can do um, to allow um, uh, custom CSS. Um, so a neighborhood can really um, tweak the, the appearance of their neighborhood. And you can also... Um, set up what tools get installed for certain projects. So you can kind of make some enforcements on, on projects within a neighborhood. You can either prohibit certain tools. If you say, all right, none of these projects really should be using this type of tool. It doesn't make sense. You can have default tools that most projects may want to have for a default um, setting. And you can also have required tools to say, every project needs to have you know, a news tool, because we want every project to, to publish news. You could, you can make that required within a neighborhood. And the neighborhoods play into the whole permission model of Allura as well. Um, so there's a, bit, there's a hierarchy. Um, neighborhoods are at the top level. So if you're the admin in a neighborhood, that means not only can you administer anything in a neighborhood, but all the projects in the neighborhood are under that domain. And so an admin can manage all of that. And then the next step is all the tools. So any admin of a project or a neighborhood can manage all those tools. And then it even goes down in some cases to particular artifacts. So like in the ticket tracker, you can have private tickets. So the permission level can go all the way down uh, to the individual items within a tool. This is the screen to, to manage um, who's actually in a group. And this is for uh, either a neighborhood or a project. It looks exactly the same. Uh, you can pretty easily just add new users to the admin role or the developer role. Um, and along the right-hand side, you can change what permissions go with that role. Um, and so this is in addition to the, the per tool permissions. And then down at the bottom, there's the link to, to add new groups. So you can create a custom group if you want to use a, have a certain set of users that have permission to, say, three or four different tools. You can make a group for that. All right, next up, I'm going to dive into what it takes to run Allura. Um, any questions about the tools or configuration so far? All right, so running Allura, um, there's a couple different options. Um, the easiest way uh, to just get up and running and try Allura is to use the Vagrant image. Um, Vagrant is a VM system that works with VirtualBox. So we've made a package that includes everything you need to know, oh, everything is in there and up and running. Uh, it gives you an Ubuntu system with everything installed. So that's definitely the easiest way to get up and running. Um, and that includes Python, MongoDB, Solar, 
and then uh, some Git and Subversion support packaged into that. And these are the main uh, technical stack, the, the tech stack that Allura runs on. Um, if you want to actually install Allura for production usage or you know, on an existing server rather than using that image, we've got an install file that will step you through all that. I'm not gonna go through all that, but the basic things it steps you through is getting your system packages installed, so things like Python and Mongo and Solar. Um, getting your Python environment set up with all the Python packages that Allura requires, activating the different tools. Um, so I, mean, I think I mentioned before, yeah, with the Mercurial tool, for example, you can add that in. You can also skip any of the tools that are packaged with Allura. If you don't want to use Subversion at all, you can just skip over that tool and you don't need to use it. There's one command to initialize the database, and then you just get Allura up and running uh, run the web app, and then there's also a background task processor that comes with Allura. So that handles things like sending off emails, um, re-indexing uh, data into Solar or into Mongo. Sort of aside from Allura are the Git and Subversion services. Allura is not going to actually run Git for you. It's not going to actually run Subversion for you. It interacts with them. It, um, you know, lets you browse those, but you need to set those up separately. We have documentation that'll step folks through a couple different options for that. Um, but you do need to run those um, alongside Allura. And then there's also instructions for how to integrate those so that Allura knows what directories to look in and you can configure authentication so that you can share the same usernames and passwords for doing a, a code checkout as, as logging into Allura if you want to do that. Once you have it all installed and running, um, there's some server-side settings that you can tweak. There's an INI file, which is our main config file. Uh, this lets you change the basic things, like what domain your site runs at, what the name of your site is, so that it, won't, it doesn't have to say Allura throughout the site. You could call it you know, My Corporate Internet Project Hosting, or you know, whatever your company is called. <laughs> uh, you set up your database connections and file system paths. And then there's also some additional options. You can, a few that you see here is a, a Google Analytics account. You can turn that on if you, if you want to track that. Um, you can specify what theme to use, what registration methods or authentication methods are available. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, but here's where you can change all the different settings on the server side of um, what's available, what's going uh, to run. There's also a few command line tools that you run on the server side, things like making a new neighborhood, uh, if you need to rebuild all your indexes, uh, and there's command line tools to run for that. So Allura is very modular and extensible. Um, when it was developed at SourceForge, almost by necessity, it was uh, developed with that sort of architecture because SourceForge had a lot of legacy systems that it needed to integrate with, and those did not and should not be part of Allura itself. So Allura was designed to be very flexible. You can have a completely different theme. You can have a, a different authentication system. And you can develop new ones of those. You can plug them in um, and, and have your Allura use a custom one if you want to. So I won't go into too much detail on all these, but I want to just go through each of these quickly and explain all the different extension points that um, Allura makes available and possible. Um, Allura is in Python, like I mentioned, and Python has an entry point system. So there's just a simple common Python command to, to set up a package, and that exposes that entry point, and then Allura can discover it and say, oh, this new theme is available, and, and use it, or a new tool is available and use it. So tools, obviously, are probably the most common thing to, to extend. Um, you know, we've got an example tool for making a paste bin. So you can have a paste bin uh, as part of Allura if you want to install that tool. And you can write your own uh, that take advantage of all the core Allura functionality. And then uh, markdown macros. Um, so if you want to be able to just embed a certain bit of uh, data on a wiki page or something like that, you could make a a little markdown macro and add that into your Allura instance, and then you could use that on any wiki page or any other place that uses markdown throughout Allura. Authentication can be customized. 
Uh, Allura ships with just local um, authentication, username and password, and it also ships with LDAP authentication. Um, you can write additional authentication, and um, it's not terribly difficult. Um, there's one class that you extend, and there's um, some docs about what methods to implement to make custom authentication. You can change the theme. SourceForge obviously runs a slightly different theme than the, the stock um, Allura theme, and several of the other sites that run Allura, um, like the open source, pro I think it's open source projects.eu or something like that, they've heavily modified the theme, uh, gave it their own branding and coloring. Project registration and user registration can also be customized if you have existing project or user databases that you need to integrate with. You can also make custom admin pages. If your site needs to have some certain admin functionality, you can develop a custom one, and it'll just appear in the, the main um, admin area for individual projects or for the site, the site admin area. In addition to creating whole components like that, the two items in, on the right-hand column are a bit uh, more precise um, for overriding or configuring something in Allura. Allura has an event handler system that runs through that background task processor. So you can just listen to events and handle those if you want to send some extra notification or different notification when a repository is cloned or when a new user is registered or something like that. You can add those in. And then it also is a mechanism for overriding templates. So let's say everything in Allura is just perfect, but you really want you know, the footer to just be a little bit different or you want the, the left sidebar in the discussion forums to have some custom link for you know, whatever your purpose might be, you can just selectively override a single template and, uh, and specify what you want to be rendered there. So there's a lot of flexibility in Allura. And now I want to sort of wrap up by thinking a bit about how Allura could be used at Apache, um, what potential Allura has for all the different projects at Apache. Um, Right now, Allura is self-hosting. Um, it's running at forge-allura.apache.org, and right now it's the only project hosted right there. Um, I think there's a lot of potential there. Um, Allura offers um, some unique capabilities. Um, for example, forking and merging for Git projects. There's no way um, at Apache to do that. Lots of projects are exploring that with GitHub and integrating with that, uh, which is fine, but it, I think it'd be uh, a good alternative for projects that are interested in being able to do forking and merging at Apache. Allura has a good neighborhood structure, like I was talking before, um, so it can easily be structured to reflect the, the organizational structure at Apache. We could have a neighborhood for all the top level projects, and each project can manage their own thing. There could be a neighborhood for the incubator projects, and that would let those be set off to the side and also enable incubator oversight of all of those projects. Uh, and then there's some additional areas of Apache, like Apache Extras and Apache Labs, which maybe don't have as much visibility as they could or as much flexibility as they'd like to. Those could be neighborhoods uh, and make it real easy for new projects to be introduced there. Um, some question. Yeah, the question is how easy is it to move projects between neighborhoods, like if an incub project, incubator project graduates. Um, within the neighborhood administration interface, there's an option to, to just move a project. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure if it works perfectly. Um, I don't know if that's used a whole lot, um, but it is there, it should work. Um, one downside is that there's not um, gonna be redirects put in place automatically. Um, so that's one thing that, that might be an enhancement. But you can also use the external link tool, actually, to, to handle something like, like that quite well. You can install an external link on the incubator neighborhood, name the, the link, the name of that project, and set its destination to be the new location. And uh, so it's not automatically going to do that, but you manually could put in a redirect, basically. There's definitely some areas where we would want to explore improving Allura um, to make it best suited to running at Apache. Um, I think integrating with LDAP, so um, committers could log in with their standard authentication would be good, and 
in group management, you know, you'd have every PMC would automatically have the rights given to them for their project. Um, Allura does support LDAP right now, but we may want to consider modifying it in some ways. For example, you know, we may want average Joe off the street to be able to come to Allura and not need an LDAP login to create an account, but be able to register so they can file a bug report or engage in the discussion forum. So perhaps some dual authentication could be explored. Um, LDAP built into Allura is just for authentication right now. It doesn't support authorization in terms of group definitions. So that's something that uh, could be an interesting, good enhancement uh, if there's a lot of momentum here. And then importing from places like Jira, Confluence, or Bugzilla, um, I think would enable a lot of projects to be able to move to Allura or at least explore that. Allura has an importer system, so there's a framework for doing this. It's pretty um, robust, but there's not specific importers for, uh, for the, the tools that projects at Allura are currently using. Um, I think that's probably something we would want to look at doing fairly soon um, to make that transition easy, easy enough at least for, for a project to explore and look at. And then, you know, the, the future is not all defined. So, you know, I think we're looking to see what projects are interested in and, and what infrastructure uh, is interested in and uh, modify Allura moving forward. That's one of the nice things about running our own development site is that we can, we can make the changes and contribute back to the code base really easily. So I want to thank everyone for your attention and uh, go to allura.apache.org, install it, use it, try it out, give us some feedback and contribute back. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Got them all in? <laughs> all right, well, let's give them a big hand.